Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Between our visitors and the Minnesota Vikings. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they've come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between our visitors and the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for the visiting Raiders, we're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. Two of the bigger disappointments in the first quarter of the season doing battle here as we get this one underway. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard here line. Here so here's the Viking here offense making their way out. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing go, it, go, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook, and not the start he was hoping for there as he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the game's first play, and it's second down now. Well, let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. For a lot of people, there are pros and cons to playing close to home in the NFL. But for Adam Thielen, it's nothing but pros. Grew up not too far from the Twin Cities, loves being a Viking, and is a really dependable third down receiver. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Back to throw here. And Diggs has it. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll look to throw here. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They run. Cook. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it will be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. He was brought down by Malik Collins. A look now at our starting defense. They're currently sixth in the NFL in defending the run. They've established themselves as a top 10 run-stopping unit in the NFL here in the early going. All signs point to me towards them continuing that throughout the season. They look pretty good, pretty darn cohesive to me. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And this one incomplete. 
Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. They're going to look to throw. And he fires one, but incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a deep... The Raiders swarm in and block it. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. And not a bad setup here. They'll have the football at the 36. So here are the Raiders now with great starting field position. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State, Derek Carr. And I'll bet right now it's just one thought in his mind. Win, win the game. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. He played pretty well. I mean, he didn't turn over the ball in terms of interceptions, no, right? Two touchdown passes two last touchdown week. Two touchdown passes, but when your team doesn't win, that's just hollow. And the best quarterbacks don't care about anything but whether or not their team won. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Raider touchdown. Eric Ebron, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Quarterback loves the receivers, but sometimes his best friend is that tight end. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Because we always talk about the guys out wide and how acrobatic they are, but that tight end, great sight lines, easier throws. They become a bigger and bigger weapon as the NFL evolves. Extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 7-0. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. You ain't going nowhere. Watch the Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. There are the numbers for Cook from a week ago. He was, without a doubt, one of the catalysts in that victory. And he can really be the glue that makes this offense go because when defenders have to commit to stopping him, that just opens up more opportunities in the passing game. Watch the pass. Watch the pass. Second and six. It's complete to Diggs. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. He'll look to throw. This one caught by his tight end, Oliver. 10 yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. So second and in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. They run the counter with Cook, and he'll go down right around the 47 this time. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now Cook. He'll get three up to midfield. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, his third touchdown now on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. 
And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Yeah, the offensive starters here for the Raiders. And we expected to have already talked about this unit. We didn't get a chance to hit on them on the opening drive because they scored so quickly. And that's the kind of unit this is. A quick strike offense. I expect to see them taking their shots all game long. And if that's the case, we'll find ways to talk about this group. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective. Vikings turn up the heat and they block it. Now it's scooped up and this is a live football. And the Vikings are in for the touchdown. Partners, you well know every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Carlson now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So the very rare blocked punt, scooped, and returned for a touchdown. What an exciting play. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So out come the Raiders. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. And a look at the Vikings defensive unit. Eric Kendricks is another one of those bloodline guys in the NFL. His brother Michael also applies his trade as a linebacker. And Eric's trying to show him he's the best in the family. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Oh, here we go. Oh. Car now to throw. And his pass incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. That makes him now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. A call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So possession Let's goes go. over go. here on the punt, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll set up a throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. He was brought down at the 45-yard line. 
Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right Come away. On, boys, let's go. Let's go. The Raider offense set to get this drive started, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Check, check, watch 54, watch 54. Ready? Car now on first down. And that is incomplete here. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here... He's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Freeman. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. A couple of plays sent them the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. A first carry now. This is Hill. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. Here's Riley Dixon now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. He'll drop to throw. Over the middle, complete. It's Lamb. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face match. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Cook following the penalty. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. On second down, Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll drop to throw. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. 
And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Thielen with his first catch, and it's a first down. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. On that last run, he's now hit the 6,000-yard mark for rushing yards in his career. And moves him squarely into the top 100 rushers of all time. In fact, he can boast that he's rushed for over 1,000 yards more than Gale Sayers did in his career. And Gale Sayers was a Hall of Famer in a short career. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And Cook was fighting for it, but I don't think he got there. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point's not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. Now it's Freeman. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Carr looking middle and it's incomplete. Tyrell Williams was the intended target, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Carr, and he comes back with one complete. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. They start the drive with Cook. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. On second down, it's Cook. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Let's go, boy, bring it up. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll run on first down. Benjamin, and he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. Here's a second and seven. And this is Cook with a grab. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. Setting up the screen for Cook. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. No, oh, they stopped him shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. Push the foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. Let's go now, let's go now, let's go now. Eight, ten, 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 ten. Watch the twist, watch the twist. Ready. Go, go, go. On first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. 
Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Tyus Bowser coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Right, they tried a 50-yarder and miss it, and now this offense has it first and 10 at the 40. Here's Carr to throw. Gets it off to Freeman. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Here's Carr. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a first down following a gain of three. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On first down, Benjamin. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The Sorry. coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Looking to throw. And this one's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. But it's going to be second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Second and 10. And Diggs has it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders 21. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Second down and inches. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Back to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. 
We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder... Are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? The Raider offense set to get this drive started. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. The open man here, Renfro. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Underneath here to Hill. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way down to the 10-yard line. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you, too, in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in Week 5. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now Carr looking deep downfield, and that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Oh, and he's taken down here by his face mask by the looks of it. And a penalty flag is going to give a much better starting position. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the face mask gets him a free 15 to start the drive. They'll look to throw, and this one hauled in by Rudolph. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make this a second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Second and six. It's complete to Diggs. 
And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. That one a gain of 20 and a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll set up a throw. Oliver, the tight end, making the catch. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second and two. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And down inside the 15 he goes. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. Push of a foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. On second and goal, Cook waiting in the backfield all alone. He's going to get it running right, and he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Dalvin Cook, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Now a toss coming right side. It's Cook. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench. Derek Carr and the Raiders set for their next possession. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. To the right side to Eric Ebron. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. That goes in the category of a play that the defense is going to cherish and excites them. A completion, yes, you give up the pass, but no gain. I mean, that's exactly what you want on defense. And sets up the fourth down. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On play action, they'll throw. Going deep for Diggs. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. After the incompletion here now, third and two. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. 23 yards, the final tally. 
This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. On the carry, it's Cook. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. On second down now, Benjamin. They follow up the first down one-yard run with a minimal gain of two. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And the Raiders have got him. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. Call it a pickup of seven. And just like that, it's third down. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. They're going to look to throw. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 15-yard line. So with a yardage on that completion, he's now right at exactly 300 yards on the game. And isn't that the magic number you get, all right, 300? That means it's going to go on a commemorative football to put on your mantle when they give you the game ball if your team wins. So much confidence flowing through him right now, throwing the football. I think it's permeated itself throughout the entire team. They feel good about what they're doing. Second and four. His pass caught at the four. Now the stop will come inside the five at the four. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Back to the ground, Cook. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. Give them a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. And that drive was going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down, but on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. Carlson able to put this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Derek Carr getting ready to go again on offense. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side, you know? And in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. That's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. 
Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty is a result of that hit there. Now throwing on first down and completing it. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Mike spot four, Mike spot four, Mike spot four. Come on. To throw, it's Carr. Well, this is caught by Williams. Gets through and now an opening. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. A big play that time for the Raiders. 43 yards. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well. They'll get a few stops. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Here's Freeman. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Shotgun now for Carr. Ebron with it over the middle. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. The Raiders on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and nine. This is Hill on the draw play. And yeah, that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Carr going to throw. And it is incomplete. The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. And he's racking up the yardage. You see the catches. And defensively, what do you do here to stop a guy like this? You keep trying to change things up because nothing is really working. Whether you have a man on him, two people, you're showing different types of zone defenses combined with man-to-man -man coverages. Try and change things up and eventually get to the point where maybe you put enough people on him, they won't throw the ball to him anymore. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Again, it's Cook. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. They'll run on first down. Benjamin. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They'll keep it on the ground. Benjamin. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 48-yard line. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Looking to throw, and that one got tipped. Kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. 
Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Four down, four down, four down. On second down, Emery. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. So that one will be accepted. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Second and 15. And Diggs has it. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Come on now, let's go. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. <laughs> They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. From the two now, second and goal. They'll set up to throw. And Rudolph has got it. The big tight end for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Rudolph, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. So another score there. And often you talk about the three phases of the game, defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. They are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. This is taken at the three. Then he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points. So they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. It'll be a gain of four. And they're going to have a third down. The Raiders on third down. Just a 20% success rate at two of ten. This will be third and six. Card out of throw. Ebron's got it. And he's got the first before he's brought down go, at the 39-yard line. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Car to throw again. The open man here, Renfro. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Carr. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. To throw again on second down. Carr over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Carr. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Four yards on the pickup. And the Raiders are going to get a new set of downs. Offense. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? Now, Carr again. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. But it'll be second and goal. An incomplete pass on first down. Here's second and goal. Now he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Here's Carr to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while. But when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. And now he's inching closer to a 200-yard game. He's been so solid. And he's really denting the pride of the guys playing defense, too, because there's certain barriers that you just don't want to give up. Never want to give up a 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver. He's closing in on 200 yards. Wow, that's a really big game. The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's the second and seven. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and ten. They'll drop to throw. Oliver, the tight end, making the catch. And he's able to get this way down deep into enemy territory. 39 yards the distance covered on the catch and run. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that, it's been confidence because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them, and now it's been a real issue for them during this game. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. Offense. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? 
And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play, and they're going to face a third down. It's third down and six. That's going to set him back five yards. Still third down. Ready, After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Let's go. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's got some space here. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Well, I've got to laugh here, and I really don't want to because the old school in me is not happy about this score this late, not necessary. But this is Madden, isn't it? Yeah. This, is how, this is how it works. Rub it in. Have a day. I mean, what, what does it matter? <laughs> These guys who are playing in this game, there are no feelings exactly. there. They don't have to face the guy. Well, they might if they're in the same room going head to head. <laughs> but, but that's the about The virtual it. guys on the screen don't have to face each other after this one. In that case, run it up. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead will swell by one more. A drive that time of six plays. And a pretty good run there in the end to top it off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. My 55, my 55. One final try now for Carr. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Vikings, they move a step closer to 500 as their record improves to 2-3. and three. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for our visitors, they'll fall to 1-4 and four with a loss. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.